Next, let's talk about the concept of specificity. Now, specificity also has a pretty simple rule, and that is most specific selector combination wins. While this is a pretty simple sounding rule, I would say that forgetting about the concept of specificity and how it's implemented in CSS is what trips up developers most often. Let me show you a pretty straightforward technique that will let you figure out which selector combinations are more specific than others. You can think of specificity of your selectors as keeping a score. The selectors with the highest score win. In other words, the selectors with the highest score would be considered the most specific. It's easier to calculate the score if you arrange the types of things that affect the score from left to right, with the left being the highest value of specificity. Then, simply take your CSS rule and fill in the number of times you see a particular type of selector being used in its proper location. The number that's created is your final score. So let's take a look at our four boxes on the screen. The most specific targeting that exists in CSS doesn't actually use any selectors at all, and that is the style attribute on an element. And that happens when you define your CSS declarations straight on the element using the style attribute. And that makes perfect sense, right? Since specifying the style attribute is like pointing to an element with your finger and saying, that one. There's nothing more specific than that. And that is why the style attribute is the most left box. Next, in specificity value comes the ID, then the class or pseudo class, and then the number of elements that are used in your selector combination. So if we take a look at this example, which says h2 style equals color green, we see that we're using the style attribute, which means this box gets a one and the rest of them get a zero. And this is pretty much the highest score, a thousand, that you can get. Taking a look at a different selector, for example, div, p, and color green, you see that it's not defined inside of a style attribute, so that gets a zero. There's no ID selector, so that gets a zero. There's no class definition selector either, so that gets a zero. But there's two elements. Here we're using a descendant combination of selectors, div and p. So therefore, the number of elements that we have is two. That's why the last box gets the number two. So let's see how this would work if you had to compare and see which one of the selector combinations would win. So if you're targeting a particular paragraph tag, and in one case, you're targeting it with the set of selectors that are shown on the left side of the screen, and in another case, you're targeting it with set of selectors that are shown on the right side of the screen, which one would win? In other words, the color of the text of that paragraph, would it be blue or would it be green? Well, let's quickly calculate those scores. The one on the left is not using the style attribute, so we know that gets a zero. It does use an ID attribute, so that gets a one. There is no class, so that's a zero. And the number of elements is one, so that gets a one. So the final score of the left is 101. On the right, likewise, we're not using the style attribute, so that gets a zero. We're not using an ID attribute, so that gets a zero again. We're using one class, so that gets a one, and we're using two elements, so that gets a two. So the score is 101 versus 12. So obviously the one on the left wins, and the text color of our paragraph will be blue, not green. Looking at the score on the left and the selectors that we've chosen to get that score, we could see that we really could have won this selector battle by not specifying the div there to begin with. We could have just expressed it with an ID selector and still would have won this battle and therefore the color of the text of that paragraph would have still been blue. So let's jump into our code editor and see this concept in action. Okay, so here we're in Sublime Text and we're looking at specificity.html. And this is a pretty simple document. All it has is really one paragraph tag and it's sitting inside of a header tag with class navigation. If you look at the styles that are specified for this document, we have two competing styles. One is trying to make the text color blue, and the other one is trying to make the text color red. Obviously, as you could see on the right side, in the browser, the text color ends up being blue. Why is that? Well, keeping in mind what we just learned, the specificity rule here is what's in play. Both rules have one class, so that gets us a 10. However, the first rule has two elements specified and the other one only one. So this gets a score of 12 and this gets a score of 11. So this rule wins. There's one more concept that I'd like to show you and that is a concept of overriding all these rules taken all together with the exclamation point important. Here we have a 
third way to define this paragraph tag and its color, its text color to be green. And this time I'm going to define it with the word exclamation point important. And exclamation point important basically says, it doesn't matter what the specificity is, I want to override everything and make this property the way I'm defining it. So here we define the color being green. So if we refresh the browser, even though this is a much less specific rule than, than this one, this is just gets a score of a one, and this remember is a 12. Since we specified important, our color of the text will turn green. Now I wanna warn you about using this exclamation point important. While very tempting to skip understanding all these cascading rules and specificity rules and just slap important everywhere whenever things don't work out, this will very quickly on a real world project become a maintenance nightmare where you'll be overriding one important declaration with another important declaration and you'll basically start working out your own system where gigantic mess will be your most important rule. So avoid using important unless you absolutely have to. In summary, in this lecture, we spoke about the cascading algorithm, the origin, the origin precedence, how the declarations merge, as well as inheritance and specificity. The cascading algorithm provides pretty precise control over targeting content while allowing you maximum reuse of styles across your website. And that is basically what makes CSS so powerful. Next, we're going to talk about styling text.